Well, good evening, and welcome to another presentation from the Halia Diet. We're real excited that you're with us this evening, and we have a, a great presentation for you. Um, I'm Paul Malkmus, president of Halia Diet, and um, we have Susan Jones, who's going to be our speaker tonight, and I'll introduce her in just a minute. But um, before I do, I'd like to um, just share with you that if you want to um, leave any comments or if you have any issues through the presentation, um, the lower left-hand box down there, there's a chat and we'll be able to, to answer your questions and, and help you through it. There will also be a question and answer session at the very end, and so um, we'll, we'll read whatever questions you have, and uh, Susan will answer those for us. So we'll look forward to that. Before we get started, I'd like to open this up in a word of prayer, though. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this, uh, for this evening and for this time that we're able to share this message, Lord. We pray that you'll bless this time and that all of the technologies will work fine and Give Susan the, the words and us the ears to hear, Lord. Pray that uh, we honor you through the presentation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, well Susan, um, Susan Smith-Jones has been with the University of California for 30 years teaching students, staff, and faculty how to be healthy and fit. Susan has established herself as one of the world's foremost experts on diet and nutrition and balanced living. Susan is the author of 33 books and over 2,500 magazine articles. I mean, that's just amazing. Selected as one of 10 healthy American fitness leaders by the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports, Susan teaches that the body is designed to be self-repairing, self-renewing, and self-sustaining, and that the power to live a radiant, healthy life is within everyone's reach. And it's our privilege tonight to have Susan, um, as she talks about, invest in yourself with exercise. Susan, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Thank you, Paul. You don't even know how excited I am to be here with you. And I think I'll start by just saying, as a little intro here, that the approach I'll take tonight is to provide lots of information for everyone so that you have, as a future reference point, this presentation so it has an ongoing life for you. So as I go through the slides, I'll, I'll explain some of the main principles to assist your understanding and to guide you through the concepts and the tips that I'll be seeking to convey. So I trust this will be an approach that will be helpful. And throughout, I'll share some info on my personal health program and what I do to stay healthy and disease-free. And, and just keep in mind, though, we're just going to scratch the surface all about exercise and, and how to build a healthy, fit body and life. And you can find much more detail in the book here, Invest in Yourself with Exercise. And, and before we really begin, let me bring this little pointer up here and say that here I am having breakfast. I am someone who loves to have vegetables for breakfast. And people ask me a lot, well, what kind of diet do you eat? And, and I sum it up like this. I eat a vegetable-centric, alkaline-rich diet. I always keep my body hydrated with lots of purified water. I avoid processed foods and junk foods. And as my grandmother taught me when I was a teenager, I always look to nature for what to eat. Because in nature, you don't find ice cream trees and donut vines and potato chip bushes. You always want to eat your food as close to the way nature made it as possible. And here you see I'm drinking some juice. In fact, I made this same juice a couple hours ago. And this fresh juice I put in spinach, kale, celery, parsley, carrot, and some turmeric. So you see the orange color of that. But, but this is how I've lived my life since I was a teenager. So we'll move on here to the next slide. And... Here we go. Exercise will enrich the quality of your life. There's no doubt about it. Nothing will do more to make you vibrantly healthy than a good exercise program because it unlocks that mental power and physical well-being. It will give your skin a youthful glow. I always make sure if I have to have a photo shoot taken that I've exercised a few hours before because there's nothing that a makeup artist could do to duplicate the beautiful glow you get after you've worked out. It supercharges your immune system and your brain. It puts wings under your confidence. 
and I know everyone I know that exercises regularly compared to people who don't or don't exercise at all have much higher self-esteem. And, you know, my, my philosophy is that of the many positive steps we can take, three are eminently under our control. What we eat, because nobody shoves the food down your throat. Um, also, uh, how we move, that's the exercise, and what we think. And the body reflects the mind, the mind reflects the spirit. And so the body is a great place to start. And God has blessed you, and I'm going to go to the next slide in a moment. God has blessed you with the most miraculous body. And one of the gifts you can give back to God is to take loving care of your body, and especially with regular exercise. And I'll give you just a little tidbit of info of how well I know the human body. And I hope right now, Paul, nobody's having a meal or a snack. Because I, uh, when, I was an under, when I was a graduate at UCLA and I got my master's in exercise physiology, kinesiology, for two of those years, I studied cadavers. And I had to learn the name of every bone, every muscle, every ligament and tendon. And I had to look at every organ, including the brain and the heart. And I was a Astonished when I looked inside the human body for two years to see the difference between people who had exercised all their lives and people who didn't. And I made a decision at that point for the rest of my life I was going to make exercise paramount and make sure that I exercised on a regular basis because all we see of each other is the skin and the outside of the body. But what happens inside and how your body deteriorates without exercise is astonishing. We were created to be self-renewing, self-regenerating, um, and th this is how we take care of our body, of course with food and other things, but also with regular exercise. I'll, I'll test you on this perhaps later, but do you know, Paul, do you know how many bones there are in the body? Well, no, I'm gonna, I do not. You don't. Uh, there, there are... Uh, you unmuted, didn't you? There are <laughs> yes, 206 bones. How many muscles? 640 striated, smooth, and cardiac muscles. But they all need to be exercised every day. And studies are now finding that no exercise is worse than smoking cigarettes. So we've got to be more active. Exercise is definitely strong medicine. So let's let's take a quick survey right here. What excuses do you maybe tell yourself why you don't exercise or have yet to start an exercise program? So let's see where we are. Some people say, I hear this a lot, my busy lifestyle doesn't leave me much time to exercise. Again, these are all excuses. The second, my mind is preoccupied with and focused on work rather than exercise. I hope nobody answers this one. <laughs> I don't like to sweat. It's not a good look for me. Um, the next one, I need to spend more time with my spouse and children. Well, okay, you can do that, but you could all exercise together as well. Uh, the next one, I don't have a gym near my home, and I don't know what equipment to use. Well, we'll handle all that during this presentation, and you don't need to go to a gym to get fit. I can't afford a personal trainer or a gym membership. Not to worry. We'll take care of that too. What's the point of starting? I'll only quit within a couple of weeks. That is a very negative attitude. And if you're thinking that, let's cancel that thought immediately because the thoughts that you have at the beginning of a program really help determine the success of the program. So, And I'm going to get you so motivated to exercise that you will never want to quit once you start or upgrade your program. Now, this is, I know this is big. The weather where I live makes it difficult if there's rain, snow, ice. That's why you want to have a little bit of uh, exercise equipment in your home. I'm too old to start now that I'm over 65. Please, 65, first of all, is young, and you're, it's never too late to start. So, uh, so anyway, we want to let go of all those excuses. God wants you to be healthy and fit. You know, as I said, God has blessed us with this amazing body. And, and one of our gifts back to God is to take great care of the body. 
and we can help our body stay rejuvenated and vigorous and in the pink with a regular fitness program. But it's more than fitness. You know, in my estimation, at least in my lifestyle, I combine my fitness with a good plant-based diet where I eat lots of raw foods. I learned about this as a teenager from my grandmother, Fritzi. She taught me about raw foods and juicing and smoothies and growing sprouts. And it's the lifestyle I've adopted up until now. And knocking on wood here, uh, I've gone over 33 years without having a cold or the flu. And and so I know this healthy lifestyle really works. Uh, It's also keeping your body hydrated with purified water, lots of good sleep at night. We'll talk about that. Um, Enjoyable hobbies. Supportive friendships is important. Keep your stress levels low. Keep an attitude of gratitude and positivity. And I like to say, if someone comes up to me and they don't know what I do, they say, Susan, what do you do? I say, I'm the president and CEO of my body and life. And I I like to encourage people to step up to the plate with no more excuses. You're not going to get to that mountain of soul achievement if you always let your excuses get in the way. People often say to me, Paul, they might say, Susan, I really wish I could start exercising, but my birthday is in two weeks and it's the church's bake sale and I'm going on a vacation and I'm too stressed out now to work out. You've got to get past your excuses. You've got to let go of the excuses and just make a commitment and start taking loving care of yourself. One of my favorite passages by Henry David Thoreau, which I, I, agree, I agree with 100%, because I like to work out in the morning, and an early morning walk is a blessing for the entire day. Keep in mind that the first 40 minutes of your day sets the tone for the day. So how do you want your day to be? You want it to be happy and joyful and hopefully stress-free and healthy and not, um, not harried and hurried. And so that's why I make sure in the morning I've laid out my workout clothes the night before. Sometimes I... You know, if you have children, maybe you make their lunches the night before. Maybe you set the breakfast table. But And even if you don't work out in the morning, make that morning time, uh, make it is the way you want your day to be because it sets the tone for the entire day. All right, let's look at what is the best time to exercise, morning, noon, or night. The truth is that any time you can be consistent with your day-to-day exercise is the best time for you because our bodies thrive on a daily routine. So let's say you work in a building where they offer exercise classes, as you know, your company offers them, and that would be great. And they're at noon, and if you can be consistent with that, then that's the great time for you. Maybe you build up a lot of stress during the day, and the best time for you is after work, and if you can be consistent, that's the perfect time for you. You know what, I always choose, unless something comes up, to exercise in the morning. And studies show that people have the most success with exercise consistently. Uh, These are the people that work out in the morning. And it doesn't matter if you go meet a neighbor down the block to do a power walk or you go to the gym or maybe you go on a hike with some friends or you take a Pilates class. what happens is that when you get the exercise over with in the morning, first of all, you release those, I call them happy hormones, the endorphins that bolsters your confidence and your energy and your self-esteem for the rest of the day. And then you don't flake out. You don't have to worry about flaking out at the end of the day on your cardio because you've already gotten it out of the way. So even if you're not a morning person, I'll talk in a little bit, how to change habits. It takes about 21 days to change a habit. And if you want to be most consistent with exercise, if you can work it into your schedule, morning is often the best time. So another little quick survey. These uh, I'm saying th- these um, what helps me, and see if you can identify with any of these. These are some benefits I get from exercise. It keeps my body strong and toned. I sleep better. My gosh, do I sleep better when I choose to move my body each day. My confidence soars as a result of the workout. I always have more energy throughout the day, especially when I've done a morning workout. 
and then you get those positive, happy endorphins running through your body all day. It sharpens my mind to face any challenges of the day. It's interesting. On a day I haven't worked out, things that normally aren't big deals to me all of a sudden are bigger than they should be, like bigger stressors. And it's, it's, there's something magical about working out in the morning. My medical checkups are always better when I exercise. I'm happier during the day, without a doubt, when I exercise. And part of that is psychological because you made an agreement with yourself to work out and you did it. And whenever you make an agreement with yourself, even though you think, well, nobody will know if I break it, you, you've got to keep your word with yourself and others, but first with yourself. When you don't, you lose faith in yourself, and then you lose faith in everything else. So if you make an agreement to exercise in the morning for 21 days, you do it. Of course it's easier to lose weight when you exercise regularly. It helps to lower the cortisol level, you know, the stre- one of the stress hormones in your body, and it gives you a long, high-quality life. All these are great reasons to work out. But if you still need more sound reasons to work out, and these are some slides that we'll go through in a moment, here are some more. It's a great way to ban the blues, help to get rid of depression. It gives you more brain power. This one you are going to love. And, Paul, I should have bolded it. It can increase your income. Exercise will strengthen your bones. It will help reduce the risk of getting a heart attack. Helps prevent breast and other cancers. Helps with your posture and healing low back pain. Soothes the way tension. Helps you sleep better. We said that. It reduces and prevents depression. It's the best way to lose weight and to keep it off. Now, before we get into the, what those um, benefits are, I always like to see what does the Bible say about everything. I, I always spend some time every day reading the Bible. And since we don't have time to go through each slide in detail, I'll let you come back to all of these. But these are some of my favorite quotes in the Bible that have to do with uh, exercise and health. And John, as most people know, was the closest disciple to Jesus. Proverbs is known to be the book of wisdom. Well, at least I think of it as the book of wisdom. And Samuel, this wonderful quote, these are the words of David. And Corinthians, as some of you might know, these are the words of Paul in the letters to the Corinthians on how to live a Christian life. And then down here is my interpretation, you can read later, of this quote in the Bible. So let's get on to the nitty-gritty here. Exercise is one of the best ways to ban the blues and contribute to your happiness. There was a well, – let me, let me backtrack. There, there's no doubt exercise physiologists have found that when you exercise, you release chemicals and hormones in your body like, uh, like, like norepinephrine and enkephalin, and you've probably heard of the runner's high. You release those endorphins in your body that lift your spirits, that make you feel great. And there was a study done in in Great Britain, headed by Dr. Malcolm Carruthers, a four-year study on 200 people. And his conclusions were that most people could ban the blues with one simple, vigorous, 10-minute exercise session three times a week. So he's not saying 20 hours a week. He's saying a 10-minute session three times a week. And that will double the level of norepinephrine, which is a depression-destroying hormone, and the effect is long-lasting throughout the day. Another reason not to exercise right before you go to bed at night, because first of all, it revs you up and will make it a little more difficult to sleep, but then all those happy hormones you get, you won't get the benefit from them throughout the day because you exercised at night. But again, I'm going to say, if that's the only time you have to exercise is night, then you just make sure you do it consistently. I think the most underrated of all exercises is walking. It's perfect for someone who hates to exercise. You don't need equipment. You need Well, yes, unless you're in a nudist camp, you need some clothing to protect yourself from the environment if you're outdoors. And you need a good pair of shoes, yes. 
Um, and I always like to say in my workshops around the world that make sure you walk your dog every day, whether you have a dog or not. I think that's very good advice. All right, so exercise improves brain power, mental focus, cognitive performance for any challenging tasks. So we all know that exercise can build our abs and build our heart muscle and give you big biceps and delts and pecs. But did you also know that it really builds your brain? And this is what we want. You can, you can age more gracefully when you exercise on a regular basis. You can be free of memory loss and dementia. And researchers have found, and this is astounding to me, that just one single bout of exercise can improve your mental focus and your cognitive performance. Even better than a cup of coffee. Do you see this? Even better than a cup of coffee. And there was an, an analysis of 19 studies with kids and adults and teenagers and, and done in, 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 in the U.K. again over in Great Britain and found that a short 10 to 40 minute burst of exercise can lead to greater concentration, mental focus, and improving blood flow to the brain. This is what we always want, great blood flow to the brain. That's one reason that when I finish a workout, if I'm in the gym or in my home gym here or the gym down the block, I lie on a body slant, you know, a slant board where my head is lower than my heart, which is lower than my legs, to even further improve the blood flow to my brain, help make me taller, make me smarter, uh, give my skin a nice glow. Uh, and then 20 minutes of exercise before taking a test or giving a speech, like I did two hours ago, actually uh, two hours ago, so I hope it might be evident, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, can help with your performance, according to a study at Harvard. And the best exercises for brain health are a lot of your aerobic activities, like hiking and jogging, swimming, I have an elliptical trainer, cross-country skiing, aerobic dance, and things like that. Now, this one you're going to love, and you're going to focus on this, this slide a lot, and it's cha-ching. It's exercise can increase your income and level of prosperity. Now, we know exercise can whittle down the waistline, but it can also benefit the bottom line. And there were some studies done at Cleveland State University. They asked thousands of Americans, and we hope they were all telling the truth, about their exercise habits as well as their weekly incomes. And they discovered that those people who exercised three or more times a week roughly made 10% more or an extra 80 pounds per week on the average than those who never exercised. And, of course, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer. Why does this happen? Exercise increases blood flow to the brain, which increases your intelligence, your positive attitude, your energy level. You know, you get those happy endorphin hormones circulating through your body, and it can raise your productivity at work, leading to higher earnings and translating into a heftier paycheck. Um, but, but it wasn't just aerobic activity. It was also weight training was shown to give you the same cognitive and energy-increasing benefits. So you'll get more than just physical well-being by exercise, and you'll become smarter. Um, it will improve your vocabulary. That's always a good thing. Um, it, and it will make you more likable because you'll be a more positive person, and it will give you a bigger paycheck. So I like that. Now I'm going to take a sip of coconut water. Exercise strengthens your bones, helps prevent getting a heart attack, and helps prevent breast cancer. To and again, I'm not going to read all these because I'm going to give you opportunities to go back and read it all yourself, and you'll get much more details in my book. But we all know that osteoporosis is a decreased in, decrease in bone density, and it's never too late or too early to build bone mass. After the age of 30, um, we start losing our, our bone density. But what, what builds up the bone density would be your weight-bearing exercises. And they've even found into the ages of 80 and the 90s, 
You can increase your bone density uh, and prevent deterioration of the muscles and the bones. And, and so weight training is one of the best things that you can do to keep your bones strong. Heart health. When you exercise on a regular basis, and especially aerobic exercise, it reduces the risk of heart attack. It improves circulation throughout the body. It helps to lower your blood pressure, your LDL, and your triglycerides. And it even helps, a, a, a harder thing to do, it even helps to increase HDL cholesterol. That's the good cholesterol. And breast support. This is so important, ladies, all of you, and even men out there, um, and for your, the women in your life. Harvard studies show that the risk of breast cancer was lower in athletic women. Those people that had been regu um, exercising regularly, long-term, vigorously, not just a stroll in the park, but vigorous, sweat-producing exercise, lowered their risk of breast cancer and other reproductive cancers. Also, research shows, as I say here, that the women who do not exercise uh, tend to be obese with increased levels of a toxic form of estrogen, estrogen, and this can be even more detrimental to you after menopause. So all these good reasons to exercise, it improves posture, heals low back pain, and adds years to your life. All right, posture and low back pain. A lot of people will say to me, Susan, I go to the gym, I lift weights, and I did my power walk. I just don't have time. I don't have any time to, to do stretching and, and to improve my flexibility. You do want to make time for that. You know, the pyramid is cardiovascular aerobic work and weight training and flexibility work. And when we lack flexibility, what happens in our body is that we get tight all over, like you might be hunching over a computer even right now or sitting a lot, and everything gets tight and shortened in our body. And a flexible body greatly re reduces the chance of injury because tight muscles that restrict the natural range of motion in the joints are susceptible to pulls and tears and stress injuries. And also... When you have tight hip flexor muscles, so watch my arrow, the front of her hips here, right here, and over here, these are the hip flexor muscles, and the hamstrings are the back of the thigh. These are the quads, these are the hamstrings. And when you have tight hip flexor muscles and hamstrings and back muscles, that can rotate the pelvis forward, and that results in excess excessive curvature of the lower back, and that will cause chronic low back pain and sciatica. And by the way, about 80% of low back pain is also due to weak abdominal muscles. So you want to stretch a little bit every day. You also want to have a tight core and strengthen your abdominal muscles. Longevity. Now, who doesn't want to live a long life of high quality? Stanford study showed that if you expended 2,000 calories a week, and vigorous exercise, you will live two years longer than inactive people. And it will, it, the, the effect is even better. If, if you burn more than 2,000 calories a week, it will have a greater effect of, of, of longevity. You'll live longer than two years uh, from people who don't exercise. And there were some studies done years ago. You're going to love this. Before I tell you the study, how would you like to look and feel and be physiologically 15 to 20 years younger in one year. And I know everybody's raising their hands on this. Well, there were some studies done at Duke University on weight training, weight training, and that's, you know, strength training, lifting weights, on people between the ages of 40 and 99 years old. And they found that if you committed to and followed through on 30 minutes two times a week, this is beautiful. It's not five hours a day, seven days a week. It's 30 minutes two times a week. And you didn't miss it for 52 weeks. They found that in one year, you, your body will physiologically be and you will look 15 to 20 young, years younger 
than people of the same age who, who don't do the exercise at all. So that's not a lot to ask. Two times a week, 30 minutes with weight training. And sleep, exercise, boy, oh, boy. Exercise helps relieve tension in the body. It helps you get deeper, more sound, restful sleep. And, you know, lack of sleep and tension are the precursors of, of so many issues in the body. And a good night's sleep is, is such an important key to mental well-being. Uh, you know, you've got to make good sleep every night, non-negotiable. I know on occasion you might not be able to, but um, I just I, I saw an interview with uh, Tom Brady, you know, the quarterback of the New England Patriots, and who happens to live not far from where I live here in the Brentwood area. And, and in the interview, he said that year-round, he goes to bed at 8 o'clock at night. He wants to get 8 to 9 hours of sleep. He trains at the same time every day. And, and he knows the importance of your body thrives on ritual. And he really does know the importance of getting uninterrupted long sleep at night. Because that's when, remember, remember the sleep. Because that's when your body heals and builds the new lean muscle tissue. Sleep is when we reset the appetite and pain control systems. Sleep is when our energy regroups for the day to come. So you can't underestimate the importance of sleep. Exercise prevents and reduces depression. Now, by the way, this is Norway right here. Beautiful scene. And absolutely... Um, I do a lot of private counseling, and I have an office where people come, and lots of times I make house calls. I have clients all around the world, and locally I, I make house calls, but when someone wants to see me for depression, and it's not pouring rain, which doesn't happen much in L.A., here where I live, I ask them to meet me at the bluff down in Santa Monica, right above the Santa Monica Bay, the ocean. Because and here's what I do. I'll meet the person, someone either I know or don't know, but usually people I've never met will, will come for the first time. I introduce myself, I give them a hug, and I say for the first five minutes, we're just going to walk in silence, please. I want you to appreciate the beauty, listen to the waves, look at the ocean, look at the flowers, the trees, look at this beautiful environment, enjoy the sunshine, and in five minutes, We'll start talking. Well, I know they look at me with funny eyes and they think I'm a little crazy. But then after five minutes, most of the time, these new people will say to me, I can't believe this. I came here depressed and, and I was a little nervous about meeting you and what would you ask me to do and why are we meeting outdoors at the bluff? And they say, I already feel better. And that is because you release wonderful chemicals and hormones in the body that, that lift your spirits. And studies reveal, do you see here, that you, if you burn off 350 calories three times a week, again, we're not saying hours a day, seven days a week. Through a moderate activity, like a brisk walk, you can reduce the symptoms of depression about as efficiently as antidepressants. I love that. All right. How about learning a new sport or skill? That can benefit your brain and improve memory. See, anything you learn that requires hand-eye coordination or fancy foot moves and puts a little stress on your brain cells will help them grow. So maybe if you've never learned tennis, take up tennis. Maybe you go take a dance class with the fancy foot moves because that will improve the quality of your brain. Any complicated activity improves your concentration skills, your short-term memory is even better. And these activities where you have hand-eye coordination work even better for your brain uh, in terms of building new cells than just walking on a straight and narrow path and biking, according to the studies. Now, that's one reason hiking is so great, because it's not a cement road. It's a dirt path with lots of pebbles and, and, and areas of the path that are a little deeper and some higher up, and then you have to go uphill and downhill. And it's never a level terrain, and that helps the proprioceptors in your body. 
so that you have good balance well into old age. Let, let, as an aside, quickly, I'm just thinking of this, about when people get older. Do you know one of the number one reasons people go to the hospital when they get older? I bet you're thinking of it. It's because they fall and they lose their balance. And you're never too old. And it's never too late to start exercising. It's strong medicine, and it improves the quality of your life. That's why I love hiking. It's my favorite way to exercise. First of all, I'm out in nature, so I love that. And I love the beauty of the nature, and I breathe in the negative ions that lift my spirits. But also, it's not a level path. It's it's up and down and sideways, and there are pebbles and rocks and and that helps the proprioceptors, which helps your balance well into old age. So, so keep in mind that even leisurely activities will help provide a memory boost, like for elderly people, short walks, gardening, cooking, especially if your pots are heavy, um, cleaning, cleaning the house like Paul, I know, or Chris, you were doing today, um, uh, then you're then you're, you're, you're more likely to have a better memory than your peers who don't do these types of things, who lead a sedentary lifestyle. And again, I like this because I'm a wordsmith, and I like to have a good vocabulary. So, oh, I love this one, get and stay flexible. So I already talked about the three pillars. That's aerobic conditioning, strength training, and then flexibility. And let me say a couple more things about flexibility. Every day you want to stretch a little bit. You want to take all your joints into the full range of motion. And the more flexible you are, then what happens is your muscles have a tendency to grow bigger, and you want bigger muscles because the more lean muscle tissue you have, the more calories you burn even at rest and when you're sleeping. And there are a lot of activities every day, like like I mentioned earlier, like hunching over a computer and sitting in your desk chair all day at work. And then what happens is you get tighter and shorter. You know, as you get older, many people lose height. You get shorter, and, and all of your tendons and ligaments and muscles get tighter. And then what happens? One day you're at the grocery store. You're reaching up to get something on a shelf, and all of a sudden you reach up and you strain or pull something in your back or you reach down to the freezer and your refrigerator and you, you tear or pull something. Uh, and this won't happen. And even if you're aerobically fit and, and you, you can run 10 miles a day, you still need to work on your flexibility. So, and by the way, this, this is a great exercise. Every day, even at the office, at home, you're stretching out your arm, your tricep, your side, your, your lats right here, a little bit of your anterior deltoid and your pecs and your waist, and then maybe arms out to the side and twist to the side a little bit. This is so easy to do. And by the way, do not, do not sit longer than an hour. Get up, do a little stretching. Get up, do a little bit more stretching um, because uh, sitting – a long time is, is even, they say it's the equivalent of smoking two packs of cigarettes a day. So just because of time, here are just some quotes. You can come back and read them later. Leo Buscalia was a good friend of mine, and I love this. I get wildly enthusiastic about little things. I play with leaves. I skip down the street. I run against the wind. And we all should keep doing that well into older age. This is David Craddock. Now, he wrote the foreword to my book, invest in yourself with exercise and I went over to England and I created a gym in his conservatory in his home and he said this to me the other day and I said write this down because I want to use it in one of the slides and I agree with him it's a great quote where he says my favorite gym is planet earth outdoors and nature I thoroughly relish finding places to work out where I can jog climb run jump sweat and enjoy all the wonder uh, all of the natural wonders that God has provided for me to exercise, and they're all free. And he's so right about that. Um, I don't want to join a gym, but what can I get at home? And I see time is going by so quickly. So I'm going to say you, uh, and you'll, you'll come back to read this and uh, everything in detail in my book. You need one good piece of equipment in your home. 
always, because if it's raining or snowing or hailing or it's too hot and too humid or too cold outside, um, and a rower is a great piece of equipment because it gives you aerobic, and at the same time you work out your legs, your buttocks, your back, your core, and your arms. So if you wanted to get one piece, I recommend that. It's good to have dumbbells. You can watch DVD programs on TV for all kinds of exercise. Uh, and you, so you won't have any more excuses. You won't have any more excuses if you get, have at least one piece of aerobic equipment in your house. So the next slide, how do I know if I'm walking at the right level? So let's say you're jogging along with your husband, and you're jogging along and singing a song, and he's so out of breath he can barely put two syllables together. You are burning fat, which is what you want to do, but his fat-burning mechanisms have shut down. So you want to make sure you'll be working at the right aerobic level, let's say if you're walking, if you can carry on a conversation. I don't expect you to sing a classical opera song, but you have to be able to carry on a conversation. And, and if you're in better shape than your husband, then you run ahead or circle him. That's what I do with friends. If, if they're in better shape than I am, they'll circle me a few times. But it will keep you motivated. But you, you, know, and you always want to use these big muscle groups of the thighs and the buttocks um, because you burn the most calories with those. And then every once in a while, you want to add in higher bursts of energy. For example, this morning, I hiked in the beautiful Santa Monica Mountains. I'll tell you, it was an amazing way to start the day because I saw four deer, six rabbits, a few, um, what do you call dragonflies. A ladybug landed on my arm, and I don't know what this phenomenon was. I'd never seen it before, but hundreds of butterflies kept flying by me in one direction like they were all rushing off to get breakfast, like the, a morning meeting. There were th probably thousands of them about 30, 20 to 40 feet away, and it was absolutely amazing. But on my hike, there's an oak tree. I call it Oak Beauty, like, you know, you know, the movies Black Beauty, Oak Beauty. And what I do for 30 to 90 seconds I go a little bit faster than normal up that steep hill. And if you're riding a bike, you go, Paul, like you like to do, you go a little faster, pedal a little faster. If you're walking, you pedal hopefully on a hill a little bit faster. And this creates more fat-burning enzymes, which will help you to lose weight quicker, and you'll get results quicker. And if you're a beginner, you know, wait to do these bursts. I do four to six within one out one one hour workout. Um, but if you're a beginner and you're just starting out, wait for a couple weeks before you add in the bursts. So we have lots of questions and answers here. I'll give you time to go through. Um, what if I don't have an hour? I'll, I'll just answer some of these quickly. Then break it up into 10 or 15 allotments. But if you have lots of weight to lose, then it's best to go for 45 minutes to an hour because you burn more fat as your fuel source. Um, and, and here, what about if I want to exercise to benefit my spirit and not, ju and not just my body? Well, then, oh, without a doubt, then you want to exercise outdoors. Don't get in the rut of always being in the gym or in your home. When you exercise outdoors, you breathe in those health-enhancing negative ions. Exercise goes by quicker. You can appreciate the beautiful nature. And it literally, when you're outdoors, it changes and increases the vibrational rate of your electrons, neutrons, protons, your atoms. And you have this wonderful afterglow after your workout is over for hours later. So, uh, and then I encourage all of you, it's a great chapter here in, in my book, a great chapter on prayer walking and prayer hiking that my grandmother taught me about. And that's exactly what I did this morning when I did my hike. And then, uh, Paul, how are we doing on time? Well, um, you're doing fine. It looks like you're coming to the end, finishing up your questions. So just go ahead and, and um, keep going. So we, can we have four more hours? <laughs> no. No, okay. All right, so I'll just keep going. So here are questions I get. Yeah, yeah. he thought I was joking. No. Uh, here, here are other questions that I get a lot. 
If I exercise alone, how do I increase intensity? Well, you do what I said. You take 30 to 90 seconds and go a little bit harder. If you're on the treadmill, make it more of an incline and go a little bit faster. And then you don't just stop, of course. Then you just go back to the normal pace and add that in a few times during a workout. And also work out with friends. They'll boost your motivation. Uh, If you're just beginning after years off or you've never exercised, It's always the same principles here. Start slowly, build gradually, keep challenging yourself. And if, let's say, you're starting weight training for the first time in your life, get some advice, get some help, get a trainer so you know exactly what to do. Uh, The best exercise for stress, whoa, there was a great study done at USC, and it was done by years ago by Dr. Morale, uh, Dr., uh, what is his name? It was Herbert DeVries. And he, f- he took a group of people and had them work, j- work out, just do a walk on that flat track to raise their heart rate, not that high, just do about 100 beats per minute, and found that was better to, to reducing stress in your body than giving them a, a tranquilizer. So ec- there's nothing better than exercise. And by the way, you see this lovely lady right here, Someone should tell her that when you chew blue bubble gum, make sure to spit it out and don't swallow it. Okay, Uh, more fitness questions. How important is sleep? Oh, my goodness. Remember what I said. Sleep is when you release that human growth hormone. It's when you build the healthy, lean muscle tissue. It's when your body repairs itself overnight There's nothing more important than good sleep to get you vibrantly healthy, and it's got to be a sound seven to eight hours at night. So make sure you get good sleep. Exercise is so good for your self-esteem, your psychological health. Remember, you release those endorphins and body chemicals like norepinephrine and enkephalin. Um, that that give you a great sense of empowerment and happiness and well-being and and just like you can handle anything that comes your way. How long does it take to establish a habit? All right, this is important. Repetition is the key to mastery, and lack of it is the road to failure. It takes 21 days for your mind and body to create a new habit and stop resisting And during this time, when you make a 21-day agreement with yourself, you don't want to skip a day. You go for 21 consecutive days You're going and tell yourself, I'm going to stick with the program, and excuses will come up. Your mind always wants immediate gratification. It doesn't care that you made a 21-day agreement. Just say to that, that babbler part of your mind, thank you for sharing, but I made a commitment for 21 days to work out or to drink more water, or to give up ice cream and all sugar and white flour products, and you'll find that after 21 days, it's a part of your life. Ben Franklin once said, whatever you do for 21 days will make or break a habit. And I always in the morning, since I work out in the morning, I make a green smoothie. And in my smoothie, I usually use a a liquid base of, of homemade almond milk, raw almond milk, Uh, but you can buy it too. Uh, I use green tea as well. Then I put in chia seeds, flax seeds, kale, a little spinach. I always put in my Hallelujah Diet Barley Max and my vanilla essential protein, which which give me more nutrients and the protein and make it taste great. I often will put in frozen blueberries, you know, if they're not in season. And I make enough to have before my workout to energize me and also enough to have after the workout, and maybe even later in the day. So uh, staying motivated to exercise, these are all detailed in my book, and I wish I had more time, but let me just comment on three of them. Let's, let's start with the first one, make a commitment. Arrange your personal circumstances so that your lifestyle totally, totally supports your commitment. You know, of course, seek the support of friends and family, but remember the prime reason for you to exercise must come from you. Um, I like to, I always like rewarding myself. Rewards increase motivation and create positive associations towards your 
exercise program. And every week you stay on your program, maybe you treat yourself to something special. Maybe what? Maybe a massage or a movie or a, a facial or or maybe a little snack at your favorite cafe or a book or a magazine to read. But rewards really, really do help. And I would say, uh, where here it is, realistic. Definitely be realistic. Don't set yourself up to fail. If you've just started walking and you're up to two miles nonstop, yay, you know, don't make one of your goals to run a marathon the end of the month because when you – when you set yourself up to fail and you make unrealistic goals uh, and you don't achieve them, then you then again, and you don't keep your word and it's too much and you're too sore, you're too tired, then then you set yourself up to lose faith in yourself. And you never, ever want to do that. So how are we doing? Okay, pushaways. I love pushaways. I created these a long time ago when I was just two years old in the 70s when I was the first fitness trainer in L.A. And it's actually a modified push-up. And we don't always want to get down on the ground to do push-ups, right? It's not always convenient and easy. Um, but we can do push-aways. Now here is David Craddock again. This is his backyard. Isn't that lovely? This is his rockery. And he's doing a push-away. It's a modified push-up. And you see he's got great form. His head's in alignment with his, with his back and his legs. And you go down to a right angle at your elbows and you go back up. Here I am using one arm. So you can start off, if you've never done these, you can start on a wall in your home. Your feet could be closer to the wall, both arms on the wall, shoulders distance apart. And you just lean gently towards the wall and push away. That's how you're, you'll start but I like to find all kinds of ways from railings and benches and tree stumps, whatever you can do, because what does it do? It firms your chest, your shoulders and arms. Here's Peter, one of my clients near his home in Malibu. And you can always vary your arm position. His elbows are out. See, his head's in alignment with his back. He's getting his anterior delts, his pecs. You know, his, his arms, and he has his core tightened. You pull the core in. And here, Angela, you see she has her elbows really close to her side. She's using a tree stump. With the elbows close in, you're getting a little bit of chest, shoulders, arms, but you're really getting the tricep, the underneath part of the arm. So I want to encourage all of you to, to get into finding ways to do push-ups. Uh, push-aways, and then push-ups. And the reason you want to do push-ups, you're going to love what I'm about to tell you. And maybe you heard this. It was a recent study, a 10-year study with firefighters. The median age was about 40. And these, they found that if you could do 40 or more push-ups at once, and a push-up is like here on the ground when you're flat, not a push-away, but a push-up, but these will help get you strong enough to do these. If you could do 40 or more, you see, this will give you simple insight into your cardiovascular health. If you could do 40 or more, you had a 96% lower risk of heart disease compared to those who could only do 10. If you could do 31 to 40, it equated to a 75% lower risk. If you could do 11 to 20, you had a 64% lower risk. So start with these pushaways. Maybe you start with a straight wall in your home, and then as you get stronger, your feet are farther away from the wall, and eventually you can do push-ups. And you, be creative. You can do them indoors and outdoors, the pushaways. I do them all day long. And listen, if for no other reason, when people see you out in public doing pushaways on the railing of something, people will come up and say, what are you doing? And then you say, oh, I'm doing this to get a strong neck and uh, I mean, uh, uh, chest and shoulders. And ladies, often when we get older, our chest area falls south, right? And we want to bring it back up north. Pushaways are a great way to do that. So keep that in mind. All right, so we're, we're getting short on time. You can read all of these later. I love this quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson. 
the first health wealth is health, and isn't that true? And like eating habits, you've always got to exercise. And if you don't, the beneficial effects are lost quickly, but you get them back quickly, and it will improve the quality of your life. And look at this beautiful quote. Wake up every morning with the thought that something wonderful is about to happen because without a doubt, it's true. It's like Muhammad Ali said, what you're thinking is what you're becoming. You're going to have a great day. And, uh, and let me see, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, write it on your heart that every day is the best day of the year. You can read all of these later, um, but this is one I love. Uh, I decided to take an aerobics class. I bent, twisted, gyrated, jumped up and down, and perspired for a half an hour. By the time I got my tights on, the class was over. <laughs> and if you think a minute goes by really fast, uh, maybe you've never been on a treadmill, here's some more funny ones you can read when you have time. And then, let's see, we're almost done. So today we've been talking about investing yourself with exercise. And then I've got other books. I've got a, a book about weight loss. I'm living on the lighter side. Uh, Be the Change, Kitchen Gardening, how my grandmother taught me how to grow sprouts, and I've done it for decades. And one of my one of my nicknames is the Push Away Lady. Another nickname people refer to me is uh, the Sprout Lady. Here's the Curative Kitchen and Lifestyle, Healthy, Happy, and Radiant at Any Age, and Choose to Thrive. And if you go to SusanSmithJones.com, and over on the right there's a sidebar, make sure you sign up for my free monthly Healthy Living newsletters. You only get them once a month, but they're beautiful photos and lots of great health info. And also, if you go to the blog here at SusanSmithJones.com, I think one of the first three blogs is all about pushaways and push-ups. And you'll you'll enjoy the blogs that change quite frequently. And let's see what's next. Oh, all right. So um, where are my books available? Of course you can go to Amazon.com. You know, you know how you go to Amazon, then you scroll the books, then you put in the title by Susan Smith-Jones, because um, it's amazing how many Susan Joneses there are out there. <laughs> Uh, so put in by Susan Smith Jones and it will come up. So that's the easy way to get it. But here is a way you could also get an autograph copy. Um, when people send send it to me and then I autograph it to you or a friend or someone someone you would like in your family or a colleague, and then I also write a note card to you or that person, and then I add a bookmark. And then I put it in an envelope, and I go to the post office in Brentwood, and I wait in line, and I love to do this. I love to, to send these gifts to you, and I hope the note card will be a keepsake that you'll keep forever. So you find out all of this at SusanSmithJones.com. Go to books, and then scroll down to the book title, and you'll find out how to do it. So now we're concluding, and... Are we ready to exercise? And let's just hope that the first three you agree with, yes, that you're ready to exercise and to stick with your new program. The second one is you're going to do more intense power walking. You'll use the stairs instead of the elevator. You'll get more flexible. The third one is you'll get a piece of, of home aerobic equipment. You'll do pushaways. Um, you know, so yes, but let's hope nobody will answer these. No, the only exercise I'll be doing um, is working out my biceps as I lift my fork repeatedly to my wide open mouth and enjoy scrumptious food. And, oh gosh, please don't say yes to this one. <laughs> um, but this is, nope, not a chance. I won't exercise. If God intended me to be more flexible and touch my toes, he would have put my toes farther up on my legs. If I get the urge to exercise, I'll handle it the natural way by quickly sitting down and relaxing with my feet up until the urge goes away. And read this later, but do you have a hula hoop? If not, get one. I have one in the back of my car. It's great to use outdoors in nature. It will whittle down your waist. It makes exercise fun. And do it with kids. They love it. And always remember, see, our bodies do not have to go downhill as we get older, we can get better every single year if we eat the right foods, 
we get plenty of sleep, we keep our stress levels down, we have supportive friendships, we have strong faith in God, we take some time to read the Bible every day, we pray every day, and exercise. Exercise is absolutely strong medicine. So thank you so much for joining me, and I hope that this presentation will have had will have an ongoing life for you where you can go back whenever you want a little extra motivation or inspiration and also think about getting a pedometer you know how it you just wear it all day long nobody needs to know you're wearing it and you want to try to get 1000 steps in a day but i know you can do it and paul i'm going to ask you two questions how many bones are there in the body <laughs> That's not fair. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you a hint. It's in the two hundred range. Two hundred and six. And how many Ooh. muscles there are about? You know that they, they don't know actually for sure. Although I have to tell you, I've looked at every muscle in those cadavers for two years, and it was also one of the reasons I changed to a vegan diet after. You know, because, well, anyway, that, that's a whole different show, Paul. But there's about 640 muscles in the human body. So it's now time to step up to the plate, everyone. You are the president and CEO of your body and life, and God has given you this amazing body. No more excuses. Let go of your excuses. Start today and get your body as fit as possible. And as you add in more exercise you'll find that you even start beginning to eat better. And then these two will help you sleep better. And then all of a sudden people will say, what are you doing? You look so good. You look so young. Well, have you just been on vacation for a month? And then you can tell them all about your exercise program. And you can send them this webinar too. You still there, Susan? Yeah, I'm here. I'm passing okay, great. it back to you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. You did an incredible job and extremely motivating. Um, and thank you, Karen, for trying to help me out with the muscles before um, Karen told me to <laughs> was the muscles. So she was trying to get ahead of me because I, I was flubbing around on the bones. Um, <laughs> but you have a Michelle who um, said she loved your presentation. She drank a tall glass of your... Um, anti-cancer, anti-cancer V12. That's oh, she's read you. my books. Yes, yes, uh-huh. yes. Thank you. Yeah. And so um, we've got a couple of quick questions here. Um, okay. There's only two here, so we'll just go ahead and ask these two. Okay. So is the rebounder a good source of exercise, and what benefits physically can be gained? You know what? I can't believe that, that someone asked that because that was on my notes to talk about. But you know what happens? You just get through everything. It is one of the best ways to exercise. First of all, it, it can fold up and go in the corner of a room, although it's always great to keep it open to entice you to use it. You, it helps your circulation, your lymph system. You get a good aerobic workout, and it doesn't stress your joints. And so it's great to it's great to have a rebounder. Yes, yes, yes. I I wholeheartedly agree. Okay, and we have one more. And if doing everything you suggest already, how do I get my abs and obliques firm without sit-ups? Well, I'll tell you. Um, there are Pilates exercises you can do. It it would be hard for me to tell you over the phone. But go online and look up Pilates exercises to tone and tighten my core. Um, And then you can even get DVDs that are uh, Pilates that just work on the abs. Um, When all else fails fails with everything else, the Pilates really does work. And it's expensive to go take classes. So I say um, have a mat in your home, like in the living room in front of the TV, and get a, get a few DVD programs. And there are some shows on PBS that I, I actually watch for, I, I talked about that on one of the slides, to help keep me flexible. But sometimes on your own you might not do it, but if you have a DVD or a program on TV, that helps you to follow along. 
That sounds great. Good advice. And just for everybody listening, um, this was recorded, and an uh, email link will be sent out on Thursday, so you'll be able to listen to it again. There was so much great information um, that Susan shared and so motivational. But we really appreciate you, Susan, for, for joining us this evening and for motivating us. Um, you, I love to exercise, and I learned a lot about even more reasons to exercise. So we really appreciate you. Yeah, and Paul, I want everyone to know that I know how well you exercise. He tells me the programs he does, and he inspires me. It's like he does planks on the floor, and then he'll then he'll do the side planks, and then he'll do the front planks with one leg up in the air behind him, and then he knows how to keep both legs up in the air when he does planks. <laughs> <laughs> but but he exercises really well, and you are a fine example of what what people should do with exercise. W- one day, Paul, we, we need you to do a webinar. <laughs> uh, well, maybe someday in the future, but um, we definitely appreciate your, your motivation and inspiration and for you sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening, and we'll be back next month with another great presentation. Until then, we pray that you'll be healthy and um, be blessed. Thank you, and have a good night.